Welcome to today's 2017 Valentine's Day edition of Human Humane Architecture. And of course, we will have a couple of declarations of appreciation in the show, promised. And um, the show uh, today will be about uh, an issue that uh, one of our first guests in the show uh, many shows ago was bringing up. And we uh, uh, did a little uh, screenshot here of picture one, if we can get this. Um, this is um, the, the first declaration of appreciation is to our discipline of architecture and the one of human humane kind. And um, our dear uh, friend and activist uh, journalist uh, Kurt Sandburn, about a year ago when also Architectural Week is, is nearing itself again, always in March, in his very last piece he wrote for Civil Beat, um, unfortunately his last piece, and uh, we hope to have him back soon, so uh, Kurt, we miss you. Um, he wrote about um, the architectural emerging uh, generation and uh, the, the challenge between um, how they get educated by us in a very avant-garde, idealist way, and then once they get out of school, they end up in a very mainstream, realist world. And, and Kurt showed empathy and an interest in that and, and interviewed some of our students. And we want to basically connect to that and go from there. And in order to do so, we found someone who uh, is a great representative for, for that realm, who knows uh, the, the corporate architectural realm very well. And he is in the epicenter of the corporate uh, architectural America, which is in the middle of the continental mainland. Uh, surrounded by land masses, just like we with water masses here. And this is in Omaha, Nebraska. And his name is Matt DeBoer. Welcome, Matt, to the show. Wonderful to be here. And gl I'm glad you stayed up that light because it's, it's getting late over there. We want to jump right in and we don't want to share yet uh, where and what you are right now. We want to actually share the whole story and where it all started. So if we can p get picture two, where is that and what was that, Matt? Uh, in slide two, that was in a, a building where we both have a lot of love. Again, Valentine's Day, very appropriate. Um, and that is IM Pay's NBC, M NBC Bank headquarters in Lincoln, Nebraska. And uh, what the slide shows is, uh, you know, a wonderful opportunity to display our work, our studio's work uh, in the main lobby of that building. And, and to the right is actually one of your first publications, a newspaper article that's actually featuring uh, one of your projects. But if we go to slide three, um, actually your project, we have to explain in Nebraska, the University of Nebraska, uh, last show was, was with Chris Ford, and we talked quite a bit that this is where we both had been given the chance to start our, um, our academic career, thanks to uh, Dean Drummond and Director Hoisted. And this was a, uh, a terminal project of yours where you decided not to do a thesis, but actually go into a vertical studio. However, mm -hmm. then, and this is my judgment, as the instructor, you pulled three, uh, the equivalent of three projects. And we unfortunately don't have the time to explain them, but um, a little bit we want to explain why three projects. And that has to do with our next most important declaration of appreciation and love, which is the next slide. Yeah, that's my beautiful bride. Exactly. Uh, and more importantly, my toughest critic uh, who said, uh, Matt, it's not really uh, all that great to do one project in one semester. You need to push yourself. So she's she's really tough, but she's also my biggest supporter. So very happy to still have her in my life. Again, Valentine's Day, that's great. Exactly. And the next slide is going to be uh, one project. We only show it in a glimpse. But once again, I was lucky to have a great uh, co-coach with Leslie because she <laughs> indeed was saying after the first project, it's great, but not good enough. And she said this again. So there were three projects. This project, however, I selected because we want to make a reference to Hawaii. Not only did mm -hmm. you do it through IMP, who uh, did the most significant building on, on the campus here, um, the, the East West Center. And this project here could very well actually work here in, in Hawaii and, and make a difference that we currently don't have. We have a high-rise boom, but we don't do buildings like that. So in, in a nutshell, in one, two sentences, which I know is tough because you're a great speaker, what is this project about, just very briefly? 
Sure. You know, so all three towers uh, that were designed that semester found themselves being uh, placed in alleyways in downtown Lincoln uh, to deal with the housing shortage that was happening there at the time. Um, and this one in particular was interesting in that uh, it was all about user control in dealing with the sun and uh, in controlling your environment via these pods that could move via some type of lever system to a pulley system uh, and adjust. And so you kind of had this very dynamic uh, facade, you know, based on how users wanted to spend their days and evenings. Which is pretty much what made the project's name, which is called Environ Dynamic Tower, right? right. And when you talked about the time, we were talking actually 2008. And that mm -hmm. was a tough time, right? You betcha. Tough time to graduate. And can we get the next picture? So just to remind ourselves, which probably there's no need to, that was the middle or the, 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 the center of uh, the recession, the, the global recession. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think you had the numbers right because you have empathy with your colleagues. You said there was three out of 35 got a job. I have to say, before the recession, every one of our graduates got a job. Then three out of 35, right. and the other number is more scary. That was two out of, help me out. I think it was 50 the following year. Yeah, yeah. And so... You, as talented as you are, uh, the corporate realm already had put an eye on you, and they were smart enough to basically snap you. And, and this mm -hmm. is there's a couple of pictures of the firm that um, gave you a chance to start your career. This is Leo A. Daly. They're one of the largest firms in the U.S. and, mm -hmm. in, the, and in the world. And I'm going to go through these next couple of pictures rather quick because this is my observation of the firm. Uh, you had me visit you, and this is my big boat way back, and this is the building, which is a wonderful mid-century building. Um, and, and next picture, um, and we walked inside, and we, we observed it together. And, and you know, these are louvers that basically are, are retractable with the sun. We did a show about the Alamoana building that did the same. So they were architects and firms. They were really, really innovative and pushing. The next picture is that these louvers work uh, rather simple and mechanic. There's the caretaker guy who goes twice a day and cranks them. And so very, very uh, great stewardship and, and pioneering leadership in, in, in sustainability when, at a time when the term wasn't even around. And the next mm -hmm. picture is that you discovered that there is a legacy, another legacy on top of that. This is attention to materiality, to detail, to finish. And you like to call this design excellence. But you were uh, at the lowest uh, point of, of entry level into that firm and, and had to work your way up. And, and me having been your uh, advisor in all ways, I was worried. And because I was caring for you and said, you're so talented, I'm worried you end up being uh, the draftsman for many years mm -hmm. and might probably not have the chance to design the way uh, you, you, you were so good at it. And, and you took this right. to your heart and, and started in the firm. The very first project where you uh, found a way to deal with that dilemma and turn this into an opportunity is the next picture. Tell us about what this project is. It, and uh, kind of stepping back just one second, you know, I'll, I'll say that you, you hit the nail on the head when it came to the, the tough moment in which I graduated. But uh, my, my career at Leo A. Daily was, uh, was really great. And they gave me a lot of opportunities um, really early on as a young designer to work on some pretty awesome projects. And uh, this first one is interesting in that um, it was very, very small. It was a canopy addition to a credit union uh, headquarters, really, you know, fairly old building, I think 1980s. And what's also interesting and a, a bit of a side note that translates to the rest of these slides is that um, the three projects that we'll show are, are all for the same client, uh, SAC Federal Credit Union. And what's fairly unique is that uh, my mother is the CEO of the credit union. And that posed a really interesting challenge for me as I was starting to design the canopy um, because I didn't want her to know I was doing it. Uh, I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, the, the appropriate design came out without influence from, uh, uh, you know, someone who, I've, who I grew up with. So uh, when I started designing this project, um, I didn't tell her. I didn't tell her at all. And I, you know, the first moment I saw her uh, when I came in to present the the, the project to her, she goes, what are you doing here? Mm. And I said, uh, I said, well, I'm designing the canopy and I called her Gail for the first time and that kind of freaked her out. So, um, 
And if you go to the next slide, I think you'll see uh, a few more, a, a, a bit of a tectonic diagram of the components of the canopy yeah. and a few detailed shots of, you know, how we yeah. handled kind of this interesting engineering solution for, yeah. the, for the canopy. And that's the, the previous picture, if we can get this back, this is what you're talking about. I subtitled that as the five T's, which is one of the terms we talked about in school as the techniques and tactics of typology, uh, uh, technology and, and tectonics. And, and you really mm -hmm. sort of be mastered yourself in that and, and for me brought sort of the firm back to what they were really great about. They were a very heroic firm. Mm -hmm. Their office building is, is a proud, uh, heroic, modern, mid-century modern building. And you kind of said, well, why, why don't we bring this back? And, and you took that risk. This is a rather ambitious, crazy cantilevering. Reminds a lot about, uh, reminds us a lot about uh, our, what she called, um, uh, basically here, Kurt and I called the best building in Honolulu, which is Rainbow Drive. And so um, then there was another moment in your life, Valentine's Day, next picture, which is your most important project, yeah. right? So absolutely, absolutely, it's what's uh, making my uh, heart big and my hairs gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> my two kids, and twins. Exactly, and where, whereas I call that previous project your apprentice piece, a, a good one, I call the next project your first masterpiece. And the audience will say, "Oh, great project, looks great," but that's not it, right? <laughs> it's the beginning of it, but right. not the end. So. Yeah, what another opportunity about? to uh, another opportunity to transform uh, a, a not so great uh, shell uh, a retail building into uh, essentially an, a great project for SAC uh, Credit Union again, uh, and turning it into um, a branch facility for them in a relatively um, uh, uh, low income area of Omaha. Mm -hmm. And and that's something what Jay really gets excited about. He keeps bugging me and said, "We got to do." Uh, really innovative um, renovation and, and, and upgrades of buildings. So we're going to take a little promotional break here for a minute, and then we're going to be back and talk about Matt, the emerging architect. Hey, has your signal just been taken over, or am I supposed to be here? This is Andrew, the security guy, your co-host on Hibachi Talk. Please join us every Friday on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha, Kako. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to navigate the journey with us. We are here every Wednesday morning at 11 a.m. and we really want you to be with us where we look at the options and choices of end-of-life care. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider, a weekly Thursday show at 3 o'clock that goes all summer long talking about issues living in a condo association. Each week we bring experts to talk about the rights and obligations of owners and boards of directors to successfully run their condominium. It's a great educational show, answers a lot of questions. We hope you'll visit us sometime. Aloha. So we're back to uh, the Valentine's Day uh, edition of Human Humane Architecture with Matt, emerging architect, who walks us through his uh, masterpiece. So uh, as I was saying, this was a shell retail building, um, and it was an interesting challenge in how you take what was essentially a you know 5,000 square foot uh, video store that's been abandoned for four years and turn it into a branch. And so you know the challenge is how do you make it unique um, and uh, and stand out and still live up to the SAC uh, image and brand. And and so uh, right away we knew that because we did because we didn't need all of the square footage, we blew through the building for the canopy, reusing the uh, existing roof as the canopy structure, and then uh, applying a, a, a thermally modified wood um, exterior skin, uh, which uh, kind of unified the entire design. Um, I think if you go to the next slide, 17, and with this, you know, as Martin always talked, you know, in our studios, you know, you're not just designing exterior to interior. It's, you know, it's always, uh, always both. And so here we show an interior shot of the new, the new lobby uh, for the branch, uh, where that uh, thermally modified wood continues in and forms uh, not just space, but even the uh, millwork and 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 kind of brand wall. Mm -hmm. And then moving on to 18, where you see actually kind of stepping back a bit and you see the, the conceptual rendering, you know, what I was using to 
communicate the design to the clients and uh, make sure things are moving forward. And then moving on to 19, where um, this is a photo I took of the project once it was complete. And, you know, there you see it illuminated at night um, and kind of a, a, a really nice addition to the neighborhood. And, and one thing that Martin always instilled on, on, on myself and his students is that, you know, just because it's a small project, just because it's in an impoverished area doesn't mean you don't do things right. And I think that's the type of work that we want to promote. Uh, it's, it's, it's a big deal to do, uh, do the right thing. And I think the, uh, the individuals in that, in those communities, I think appreciate that mm -hmm. a lot. And talking appreciation here, I, I got to get things a little bit more clear because usually when you start in a firm, once again, as the recent hire, you assist the design teams and then you work your way up. And that's a right. gentle way to say it. But after you had proven yourself with your with your apprentice piece, you, you cut a deal with the company. <laughs> and you basically say, I bring in now my first actual project and what I would like to have in return is the okay that I can work through that through all the architectural phases, meaning from the design, the schematics, all the way mm -hmm. through construction management, plus yep. a bonus because besides your many talents, you're also a very uh, gifted photographer. Actually, you have a business on the side that's wedding photography. And all <laughs> the pictures we see of your projects is Matt DeBoer, architect, is Matt DeBoer mm -hmm. photographer, right? So, right? so this is very, very unique because again, normally you start and for several years, you assist uh, with with drafts work and then once you've proven yourself over the decades you might make it up to a point where you actually allowed to to be the design principal right and and right. that gets us to the next picture that um that um usually just the nature of the corporate is has to be profitable so mm -hmm. you cannot massage the avant-garde due to the nature of the corporate as much as you would do it in a boutique. That's another term, a boutique a firm. So uh, Neil Daly was always interested in getting awards, but it didn't always happen the way they wanted it. So what mm -hmm. happened here in this case, Matt, with that picture we just saw, 20? Well, I was uh, very honored uh, to have uh, been able to represent the firm and, and, and pick up a, an AIA Nebraska uh, award for, um, I believe it was reuse architecture. I, I can't remember the exact uh, exact mm -hmm. name. And, um, and to have Trey Trahan uh, be the one, the juror who was a part of selecting my work was just, uh, you know, it kind of blew me away at the time. Yeah, and it blew him away because he is a boutique architect. He does small selected mm -hmm. work doesn't have to feed a lot of people. That's the benefit of that. And he right. opened the envelope and was rather surprised that he awarded what usually is not his peers, right? He awarded corporate right. America and was a little <laughs> astonished to say the very least. And then was very, very happy to hear the story behind, which is a young architect right. basically reconnecting the corporate to their roots, the way I look at it. And the next picture, sure. Um, is you got the recognition that you deserve, so you got it published um, internationally, peer-reviewed, well-deserved. But the next picture is for us the most important because awards and, 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 and publications mean nothing if the client isn't happy. And I had the right. big chance to have you show me the project two years ago and it was on a weekend, and we have to also be more specific about the neighborhood. The neighborhood is very challenged, and North Omaha mm -hmm. is known as one of the most problematic neighborhoods as far as crimes and shooting and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so we came there, and yeah. the bank was already closed, and then we met the director that we just saw, and she was more than happy to reopen and very proudly show her piece and share with me how uh, amazed she is, what a difference that little project, as you so humbly said, has done to the community, right? So exactly, exactly. And, you know, uh, you know, I have to uh, the rest of these photos are, are, are of uh, of Martin's taking and, and it was great to have a very proud moment to to have my uh, my mentor walking through some of my uh, my uh, projects. And, and for Kathy here, that's picture the branch manager um, and and her glowing review of you know being in the space and what it's meant to the community and, and being uh, a, 
and kind of having SAC and, and, and her employees be a part of that is, uh, she's very proud of it. So mm -hmm. to me, that's, that's the most important, you know, the, the architecture just houses, uh, uh, you know, the function of trying to be uh, a, a really great credit union in that area. But for her, that's, that's the biggest deal. Yeah. No, it's really a, a commendable cultural approach to architecture, which mid-century, so the roots of Leo Daily always had. But in a highly capitalized, commercialized, commodificated culture, this is sometimes tough, and that's why architecture is, isn't, isn't the same anymore. But, so right. you tried one more time with Leo Daly and, 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 and bigger, really big, right? So we already saw a little pre glimpse and that's also the background we're constantly seeing behind. So picture number 23 is your imagination of what? So after the branch facility opened, uh, got another great opportunity to um, help SAC uh, uh, kind of consolidate. They had several buildings in which they were leasing and had people in and it was time for them. Um, they had seen tremendous growth during actually during the recession, uh, which is great. And they were able to uh, embark on a new headquarters uh, for themselves and and kind of find a, a way to bring all of their people under one roof and uh, while I, I mean I could talk about this project for hours um, but right now you're getting a glimpse of uh, one of the more important spaces which is the, the main atrium uh, right off the entry yeah and why that's important was uh, you know for a, a small credit union who didn't want to lose its roots um, uh, didn't want to lose the openness uh, that uh, that makes them who they are. Uh, they they wanted to use architecture as kind of an emblem of that openness. And so when you walk in as a, as a member, uh, you can right away get on a on the stair that goes all four stories, and uh, move through the building. You know, and that's a pretty pretty unique thing uh, in these day and age. Yeah. This day and age. And the next picture, um, I apologize, I take the blame for it being a little blurry because I took the picture and I'm not the gifted photographer that you are. So talking mentor and mentee, for a mentor is the best when the mentee surpasses, which has long happened, a long time ago. So I'm really uh, happy to, to experience that. But, and I cropped it also here. But um, so this gets, again, you were not just designing this and then passing it off. I remember you told me about these uh, facade emollients that you were very passionate about and Leo mm -hmm. A. Daly's headquarters has blue lamb beams so this is reconnecting almost literally the tectonics of the firm and reintroducing that normally a corporate headquarters right. of a bank you use aluminum or a steel post period that's it right you choose the color but you wanted wood and you helped the local I will never forget you helped the local uh, trades because there was a little guy, little guys again, you know, who was actually only mm -hmm. able to do that. There was none of the bigger, you know, uh, companies were not able to do that. There was this one guy that you're rather impressed. So right. there's this empathy I want to get across. So you, the corporate is yeah. usually considered to be cold and kind of standoffish, you know, but you have this uh, empathy and, and love, Valentine's Day. Right for what you do and for the people right. who are involved, meaning your clients and your contractors and your users at the end. And we want to That's show right. the next picture, number 25. So the first picture was uh, two pictures ago was imagination. The next one was sort of the execution. And this one is the final product, which again, right. uh, here is your mother and uh, thank, thank her and thank you to having shown the project to me these few years ago. And once again, right. you can see Omaha, we have to say when we talk about why we can't compare things literally, because this is temperate climate, cold climate. But if you imagine right now a cold day and having the passive solar gain coming in, this is, this is pretty huge. And with a little yeah. eye wink, as you know, I always gave you to push you harder for the next step. I said, if you add some external shading, you also get some great uh, summer overheating protection. So. And there's some on there's some on other portions of the building. Yeah. It's uh, you know and you know and, and it's pretty uh, pretty unique uh, in Nebraska. It was the first first office building to take advantage of not just geothermal wells but also geothermal wells and uh, a chilled beam cooling system. So mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know of any other uh, uh, installation of that uh, that's active uh, yeah. right now in Nebraska. Very greatly pushing innovation and. Before we get to the end of the show, which is unfortunately soon, we want to show with one picture what followed then and actually also where you are right now. 
And we've talked, so, we previously we talked about uh, a, a Hollywood blockbuster, and here we're talking a Borders bookstore on the right side. What happened to that right. one? So uh, in, uh, I transitioned from Leo Daily to uh, HDR a little, little over two years ago, and first project I was able to uh, be a part of uh, was not as a designer actually, but rather as the project manager um, and kind of one of the uh, kind of the key uh, the key leaders for the project. But it was a Borders bookstore that was abandoned for I think two or three years. And we transformed it to uh, the first in Nebraska uh, and one of the first in the country, an all digital library um, and uh, notebooks. Uh, it's all about access to technology, access to learning in new ways, uh, software, et cetera. Um, a, a pretty awesome makerspace as a part of the project as well. And it's centered right in right in the middle of Omaha um, at the busiest inter intersection in the city. And it's uh, it's been a wild success uh, for uh, the organization that's uh, funded and uh, puts this project on. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. So that gets us close to the end of the show. And now we will reveal, and we already did it sort of, uh, you are now vice president, managing principal of HDR, which is the other biggest firm in, in the United States. And in uh -huh. this little, you know, prep talk we had, and and uh, you said, well, that's actually nothing in your very humble way. But, but I want to point out the way we're talking 2009 when you graduated. We're talking 2017. So these are a few years, and right. the amount of work you have accomplished is one thing. But what's really commendable, and I want to use this as an encouragement for the emerging generation they have, that we have here in, in Hawaii as well. And the nature of the firms is rather similar to the one in Omaha. We have more bigger firms, we have corporate firms, and yours is a perfect case study that you don't have to give up your integrity. You'll love Valentine's Day for design. If there's a will, there's a way. And you had a very, very strong will and made a very, very strong case for yourself. And, and, and we're phasing out here. Once again, we want to conclude with your wonderful wife, hi Leslie, and the kids, <laughs> who besides yeah. everything you've done, you always dedicate um, the time to them. And with that, we also right. want to let you go so can you, you can get your kids to bed because it's about bedtime now, <laughs> right now. I'm and surprised they you. didn't come down at any point. And thank you for the awesome inspiration and motivation and that great raw model you are, Matt. It's a pleasure. Appreciate it. Uh, thank you for having me on. Thank you so much.